Hi, this is Tweak. I found some orange beads and made some orange cluster balls. What to do? Hmm. How about making some pumpkin flowers? Join us. Supplies you'll need for this project are, you'll need some beads. I'm using orange eight and 10 millimeter crystal glass beads. You will need some wire. I'm using a thin copper wire. Some sticky back felt in colors of brown, greens, oranges, and black. You'll need a pen, some tools to work with the wire, and a scissors for cutting. So let's get started. To make a pumpkin flower, you'll need to have nine cluster balls. I've made these many times, and if you'd like to see a link as to how to make them, click right here. I used eight millimeter beads to make my clusters and they need nine of them that I'm going to string on some copper wire. The copper wire is 9.1 millimeter wire. I'm just going to pull out a bit of it. I need enough to go around for my pumpkin flower, but I want excess and I'll show you why in a moment here. Oh, I'm using up the rest of the spool. Okay, that works. So what I'm going to do is take my wire. It looks like I've got about a foot and a half here. I think that's a little more than we'd need, but it's better to use more than less. I'm going to string on, going right through the cluster ball, just pick a spot. Now I'm really good at hiding my knots. So if you're not so good at it, try to hide the knot where you're putting the wire so it won't show in the final product. And I'm going to take a little gold bead. I'm just going to take something to put between the cluster balls. It adds a little bit of sparkle and this bead won't, see, so won't float through to the center. So it's a good stopper. So I'm going to put a cluster ball and then a stopper bead. And I'm just going to finish till I get all nine of them on the wire. This is a project that once you get the cluster balls made is really fun for little kids. It's simple and when we create the pumpkin face that goes on the inside, that's where you see some re real creativity coming out of the little kids. Okay, what do we add here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I had an extra. I'll put you over here. I'm going to, I want a little more wire to bring this towards the center. Very simply, I'm going to pull that as tight as I can to that last bead and just start twisting. I just want a little bit of a stopper there to hold it in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around twice. I just want this to be nice and secure at the top. And then I'm just going to leave, pull this strand of wire down. So one of them is going to stay towards the top and one of them is going to come down. And I'm going to put a little bit of a curl, just using my finger, put a little bit of a curl there. That is going to hold your pumpkin face in place. If you have a little much, I'm just going to let it hang there. You're not going to see this. This is going to be between the pieces of felt. So see, it's just hanging there. Now this one here, this one here, I'm going to try to fashion into a hook. So I'm going to go around a couple times. I don't want too big of a massive wire up here in the center, but I do want a very simple hook here. Again, I'm just going to use my finger and then I'm going to go around just going to fashion it around. I'm trying to emulate the vine of the pumpkin. See, that's looking kind of, this is why it's fun with kids because it doesn't really matter. You just go around till you like the looks. Now what's going on here, I like that. There's enough of a hook there. I've got the shape I want. Now this part here, I'm just going to twine it up like it was a pumpkin vine. So I'm going to just run it around. You can cut it if you don't want a vine this long. So I've got some goofy looking vine thing here going. 
and then just position it however you want to position it. Good! Always room for play even as you hang it up somewhere. You can manipulate that to however you want it to look. So this down here, I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. I'm going to put a pumpkin face in there. That is so pretty just hanging like that in the window, but I want a pumpkin face in there. So here's where we come up with the felt. This is a felt that has a sticky back on it. This might seem silly, but I'm using a, just a tool I had in the kitchen. It's a 1 fourth cup measuring cup. I wanted something that fit the size of the beads. So I would come to, let's cut out a few. I might need extra. Just take my pen, put it on the back side, the paper side of this felt, and we're just gonna trace it around. See, here's another great thing for the kiddos. Really, really simple. Okay. And do it one more time. Let's come over this way. Ooh, this would be cute with like cat faces or ghosty faces. It doesn't have to be a pumpkin, but I like the idea. Oh, that's giving me more ideas for the next time. And then we just simply cut it out. One done. And I do this one. So we've got two pieces that fit together. See? If you're going to make a bigger circumference, you would use a bigger circle, but this is the size I want. One fourth cup measuring cup. <laughs> so here we go, we're gonna put a face. Only thing here is whatever face you use, I want to duplicate it as much as I can on the other side. So when you look through, you see the eyes and the mouth and you don't see other shadows. I like to see the fabric have the orange shine through and, and try to get it as close as you can which just makes it look a little nicer in the end. So let's take these ones we just cut out. To make the face, I actually went online and looked at pumpkin face images to find some different faces. And I tend to go for the happy faces rather than the creepy faces. And that's all up to you. I take a piece of this black felt here and I just snipped off a strip of it. And I'm going to do that now just because I want a little more to use than right there. And I'm going, what, about half inch to an inch. I'm just going to cut straight up. Okay. And now I have to decide. I wanted to pattern after. I like this little guy here. I like it the way he's got happy eyes. So I usually just go for the eyes first. And I'm just going to cut out. You got that little circular. It's like, think about cutting out two commas. And once you get your your idea for how you want the first one to look, is pattern the second one after it. Okay, just go until you like what you see. I like that. Let's cut out two more. Got lots of black felt, but I do like to use the scraps up. That's good enough. <laughs> Okay, so now we gotta figure out a mouth. Um, I liked the mouth where you just cut the teeth in. So basic, you cut out about the width of what you think you want, and I like that. I'm gonna try to keep these pretty much similar. And then I'm going to cut in, looks like three teeth on one side and two on the other. I like the three teeth. Well, it looks like a pumpkin that I would probably carve. <laughs> okay, this side. Let's do another one. They don't have to be exactly alike, but like I said, if one of the sun shines through, I want them to not give too much shadow. Let that orange fabric shine. There. Oh, look at this guy. My teeth are weirder, but you know what? I like that very much. No noses on my pumpkins, just eyes and teeth. So I'll put this stuff out of the way. Now it's time to attach these. And it's a very, very simple matter of taking off the paper. There. Okay, so we have our two pumpkin faces. Let's see how did I do? Not too bad. That's pretty good. 
Now, I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to put some lines in my pumpkin, you know, where his, where his rind is. I'm using a ballpoint pen because I want just a little hint of, of the color. I just want you to be able to see the pumpkin looking more gourd-like. And I'm just coming through and I'm just adding the lines. I'm just going to pull in a little bit off the top. You know where you'd find those? Just round him out a little bit. Make him look a little more bumpy. Tiny, tiny bit. Now I'm going to peel you off. Did I forget anything? Nope. I'm going to peel you off and stick you on here. So I'm going to peel you off. Just lay it gently. I'll try to have his face facing towards the top. I'm gently touching the wire and flip it over and attach the other side. He looks a little more pumpkin-y. He's got his rind lines in him. And now I'm just pressing the two images together. And kind of tucking them just a little bit into the cluster ball. Let's see how he looks on the other side. <laughs> very, very cute. Anything left to do? Nope. Find a hook. Oh, wait a minute. I do have one more thing to do. I need a stem on this pumpkin. Let's put a brown stem. Yeah, that hides a little bit of the wire too. There's our finisher. Well, this time I am gonna try to make them look the same because they have to mirror each other, although it's not really gonna show, I don't think. I think they're, they're here to look nice and to cover up the wire. So I'm gonna make them just cut out a stump. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick them on. If you make a mistake and stick these, you can unstick them. The glue lasts pretty well. So there we go. See, now I've got my pumpkin. See the difference just one little stem makes? Let's add the other. Come on, fingers. There it is. There's the stuff. And push him back through a little bit and position him over this way. My pumpkin is done. Ready to shine. Cannot wait to see this looking all orangey in the window. Isn't that nice? What you think? And there you have it. We've made a two-sided pumpkin flower ready to shine. Isn't that adorable? So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and remember to ring the bell so you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak is coming along. Until then, I say make some of these cluster balls, grab the kids and some felt, see what shows up shining all orangey and bright in your window. See you again.